Hey, Jake. Hey, Jake, congratulations. That's two in a row now. Maybe people can stop talking about the demise of the Bulls franchise. <laughs> That'd be a nice change of pace. I'm sure that brings a smile to your face. Uh, what about that wind out there today? Listen, I'm uh, kind of a, a fan of Amorne and a tough day at the office for him. But he still had some pretty incredible kicks setting up that one try with that high ball in the air. But but I will say this. Um, will you be giving Mornay the Wounded Duck Award for that kick into touch there and uh, part of the game there? Um, and, and and how much did the wind affect your game plan, I guess, is my basic question. Yeah, Chris, I think, obviously, I mean, you um, you saw, and it, it was very, very difficult wind. It was, uh, I wasn't quite sure which way it was blowing. At, at the first half, I thought we were against it. And then as it turned out in the second half, we tried to kick a couple of those up and unders and the ball came back towards us. So, yeah, look, I, I think it was difficult for all of the players in the back three. Um, but as you quite rightly say, you know, got a result. Thought we played really well at times. Um, you know, if you consider the opportunities we created and we didn't finish, I mean, we could have comfortably won that game long before the, the last play of the game. Well, bonus point victory for you here, which is needed in current cup. It's a long season, but uh, the way the game started, it didn't look very good there. A bit of ill-discipline. Uh, scrums are looking pretty weak. They had possession 72% of the time in the first dozen minutes, but the Bulls held it together and um, you got a pretty interesting try there and you sort of regain your momentum. Was there a point that changed it? Maybe that try brought it back for you or something else? Yeah. Chris, you know, it's interesting when you, when you, when you, we, I didn't realize that the possession stakes were that high, but I mean, what we really were working on is not giving penalties away. And so, you know, if you consider, I think at the first half, we gave five penalties away. Not one of them was at the breakdown. I think two scrum penalties, one for collapsing a mall and the other one for jumping across the line out. So, so, you know, I was actually quite, quite happy with the way we defended and not giving breakdown penalties away. So, and then inevitably what happens if you play against the side and hold on to the ball, then obviously they can get up to a 72% uh, position stake. So, you know, I mean, obviously the back back end of the game, we, we're a little bit ill-disciplined. Again, we gave them three or four penalties, you know, back to back to get them all into our 22. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was, I was, you know, happy and, you know, I didn't look at it in isolation as in 72%. I was, I was rather looking at, we didn't concede penalties and give them entries into our 22. You know, I think you're right, Chris, they had 72% percent but they're on the halfway line and and that you know that doesn't spell danger for team defending now fair point jake yeah uh, 19 to 3 halftime lead and you, know, you come out of the locker room uh, are you are you intentionally making bull supporters sweat i mean this one went down to a penalty there right at the at the death knell and i'm a little worried that this might slip away we've seen a number of games during that long losing streak slip away uh were you yeah. concerned at all or are you comfortable with where the bulls were at late in the game well, well two Thanks, Chris. Very interesting. Just uh, when 19-3, um, we got a like a breakaway and there was a pass that went to Nazam Kha. I think if that pass had gone to hand, we probably would have scored, scored another long-range try. And then as it turned out, it was a knock-on. I think Mornay knocked it on. They got a scrum. They scored from that scrum. So, you know, it's one of those difficult things. I think when you, you would understand, when you're not winning, you start you start panicking. You know, And at that stage, if we had got that pass away and I think we'd scored another try and we'd gone like 26-3 up, then it would have been game over. And I think as we considered a try there, then all of a sudden they were back in the game, then they scored, scored another try, um, and that made it difficult. And I think like anything, winning is a habit, and I think losing, you start getting in, you know, you start panicking when you're in those situations. So I have no doubt that after this game, this group of players will get a lot of confidence out of the way they played, and, and the fact that they got a result as well um, will, will make, you know, make it so much easier for us to go to training on Monday and prepare for our game next weekend. Well, speaking of that winning culture, um, you're off to uh, Joe Berg, getting up there for an unusual doubleheader tomorrow. Best of luck. Yeah, the Bulls have to win this one and maybe win out to get a strong position. So good luck to you, Jake. Thank you. Thanks so much, Chris. Appreciate it. Hi, Jake. Can you, <clears throat> I hope you can hear me. Yeah, I can, yeah. Okay. Um, a twofold question. The first one is similar to what I asked Joey. It's about the high error rate in the game. Does that contribute to uh, to the wind, or were the guys uh, on both sides just nervous? Yeah, you know, it was a little bit of the wind. I think also, you know, when you when you're not used to getting that space and that sort of, uh, I mean, you look at a couple of things. I, I looked at Lionel Mapu knocked the ball like, ball on over the try line. The Zamko had a two on one in the beginning of the game on the right hand corner. We never finished there. Uh, then, you know, a couple of line breaks at the back end of the game when, when Dili Simulani is, you know, grabbing the ball two meters from the trial line. You know, Reinhard Ludwig making that line break and we're not finishing. We didn't finish that, that play. 
So, look, I don't think that was the win, appreciating that we can hold on to the ball. But uh, yeah, as I said earlier to Chris, I've got no doubt yeah, that this win will, 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 will be a massive catalyst for the confidence in the group. Um, and again, five points in Durban. I don't think too many teams have come here. Last time we won a Curry Cup game here as a franchise, I said it was 2015. So, so again, it just puts things in perspective of what, what a special win that was. Uh, final one from me. <clears throat> Sorry, apologies. Uh, final one from me. Uh, does this make your selection easier or more difficult going forward? Sorry, Jan, you broke up there. Say it again. I say, does this win and the performance make your selection easier or more difficult going forward? Yeah, look, I think it's, you know, when players play well, I mean, it's nice to see. I mean, I saw a lot of guys tonight put their hands up. I mean, you look at a guy, and I used it during the week, a guy like uh, Keegan Johannes played well in number nine in the two games that we were overseas, and he got rewarded by getting himself into the URC team. So, you know, once 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 the URC is finished, there's a lot there's a lot of Curry Cup games left over. You pick one team, the back end of the Curry Cup, that you're good enough and, and hungry enough to make that squad. So, I mean, it makes it easier, I think, because what it does is it just puts pressure on players and it puts pressure on on competition, which is what coaches want. Thank you. Hi, Jack. It's Ashok here. Um, Jake, do you think the, the penny sort of dropped for the guys now uh, in terms of how they held ball in hand? I know there were missed opportunities. You could have scored three, four more tries, actually. But just the way they take their rain with purpose, ran good angles and held on to the ball and actually had a go. Ashok, you know, to be fair, I mean, this time last year we were playing and we scored lots and lots of tries. I think we scored the second most amount of tries in the URC. Um, so it's not something that we're not... We're not trying to get right um you know obviously it's one of those things as i said earlier when you're not winning games um people get nervous you know you go into your shell whether you like it or not it's like a like a golfer that misses a few small putts you know he starts to he starts to panic about getting all the little putts again so you know it's happened in our in our franchise um and yeah i mean you're, you're quite right there were a lot of opportunities and the more they come the more that you know we'll, we'll be more com comfortable and more confident in finishing them off so I thought we played really well tonight, Ashok. I mean, we scored four tries to two. Uh, we could have scored a lot more. And that and that in itself, you know, will, will create a lot of confidence and a lot of momentum in our group. And just a word on Sibongili Novuka with the hat-trick. I mean, some well-taken tries here. That one just before halftime was an excellent sequence with the offloads and all of that. Yeah, Ashok, I mean, I'm really happy for him. You know, it's, 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 Sometimes in coaching, you get these success stories and you get a guy who comes out of grey bloom and you sign him and, you know, he goes on to become a springbok. There's an example of a guy who was, like, not in the mainstream school, came through, played in the varsity shield, and now he's, you know, he's not only played well today. Every time if we've called on him, he played he played in the Heineken Cup. He played really well. So I'm happy for him. I think it's, you know, it's great. that Sometimes the success stories of those is also as satisfying for me as a coach as it is when you get you know a guy coming from a from a really big established rugby school and goes on to become a springbok. This last one from me, Jake. Uh, the defense was really good. I mean, the like we said, the Sharks took the ball through 15 phases one time and 12 phases, and they had a lot of position. But you guys held on, and I know it was tight at the end, but they still pulled it off. Yeah, Ashok, I mean, I'm really chuffed with the defense. Eh? I mean, I think again we've we've had a lot of criticism about our defensive you know defensive sets and. Uh, you know, we conceded five penalties in the first half, as I said to you. Two of them scrum penalties, one for jumping across the line out, one for sacking a late mall. So, you know, when you can defend the whole of the first half and not give a breakdown penalty or an offside penalty from the from offsides from uh, from defensive sets, it's obviously very pleasing. Um, I think we got a bit tired at the end. I think again we sort of fell off a couple of tackles. Um, but, you know, the way they scrambled and the way they were stuck to it is obviously very pleasing. So, you know, that, that again, it will, will give a, give the other group a bit of confidence as well. I'm sure the Bulls that are playing tomorrow would have watched that game. And, you know, you all know what it's like. And they sit there and watch their provincial side win. You know, it's a great motivator and boost for the guys that are playing tomorrow.